I'm holding fire on the whole Ben Rama conspiracy thing at the moment. I'm not saying I don't believe it, by the way. I, 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 I've got my own suspicions, but I'm just leaving it because I think we're going to find out an awful lot more after the next game against Everton. Because I think what we've just seen against uh, Southampton was Ben Rama coming on and doing OK. I'm certainly not going to think less of him for not putting that chance away. That was a great save by the Southampton goalkeeper. A world-class Gordon Banks save, wasn't it, really? Absolutely brilliant save. But I thought he injected a little bit of spark and a little bit of life into West Ham. I certainly feel that he had the better players to play with. Let's be fair, Yarmolenko had a bit of a stinker. Bowen was a lot better and he was able to play with Sebastian Haller. Uh, sorry, he was able to play with Mikel Antonio rather than Sebastian Haller. I would have liked to have seen Ben Rama and Lanzini at the same time. I suspect they're on the same wavelength, but we didn't. But anyway, I'm not going to pass judgment on the whole Moyes, does he want Ben Rama until I've seen what happens against Southampton. Because after Southampton, I think we're going to know an awful lot more about whether Ben Rama is in Moyes' plans, whether he's in West Ham's plans, whether there is a clause whereby he can be sent back to his parent club, and whether or not Ben Rama actually wants to stay at West Ham. Because let's be perfectly honest with you, he probably had a lot of hopes and dreams before he started with, with West Ham about playing the Premier League, and I would imagine it's not turned out quite as as he would expect. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I've just spent the last the last almost two minutes talking about Ben Rama. Having said, I'm not going to talk about Ben Rama, but I'm just letting you know I'm watching the next game against Everton very very closely indeed because I do think there's merit to it including him in that. However, in the game that we've just seen against Southampton, I'm I'm a bit relieved. I'm a bit pleased with what with what I've seen, because it wasn't swashbuckling, it wasn't wonderful, entertaining stuff. But I, I do feel that I've bought into this mantra of David Moyes, which is we are going to be gritty, we're going to run hard, we're going to, to be tough to beat. And that's fine. That's absolutely, that's absolutely fine. Like I said in the review, I'd prefer us to play like Liverpool, or like Jurgen Klopp or whatever. But we don't, this is how we play. But this is our identity now. When we lose our identity and we sort of roll over and have our tummy tickled, as I felt we did against Brighton, it still came away with a point. Um, then I, I I wonder where that sort of nasty, horrible West Ham has gone. I felt we were a lot a lot more like it in this game. I thought that cliche that I've sort of said about West Ham, which is teams will be pleased to see the back of us. Southampton will be thinking, "Frightly, thank goodness they've gone." Onto the next game because that was a Southampton really only missing um, one player in the centre half. So um, I, I thought all round that was good. I was really pleased with what I saw from Craig Dawson because I don't think it's easy to. Jo I think it's I think it's natural to to be inquisitive just as a human being, not just a footballer. So I said when Ben Johnson played really, uh, he's played his game against Brighton, played well. Got man of the match for me and um, and scored the goal. And I was very, very mindful that that's a big day for Ben Johnson. That's a big day for his family, obviously. And I know, having seen sportsmen at, at close quarters and just in anything, they're, they're, just, they're just human beings. They'd have kept every newspaper clipping, Ben Johnson's family, of him scoring his goal. They'd have watched every video. And, and it's just human nature to try and find out what people are saying about you. And it was a proud day. And I was pleased uh, for Dawson because... Although Dawson's played for Watford and, and West Brom and he's played in the Premier League, certainly West Ham are, are bigger than both those clubs. And, and it would have been a big day for him because at the point where he got relegated, he possibly might have thought, that's it, my career at the top level was has done. So there would have been a certain amount of pressure on him. I'm pretty sure he'd have been looking at the reviews and looking what people were saying about him, particularly when he knew he was going to be included in the team, which I guess he didn't find out just before kickoff. I guess he'd trained for the last two or three days. And it wouldn't have been nice to read that no one really fans his shirt. And it's tough for West Ham fans because we've spent all summer long chasing centre half for thirty odd million, and we end up with a journeyman on an old journeyman, a bit like myself really, on loan from the Championship, um, in place of somebody 
you know, worth 30 odd million quid. He wasn't fancied, he wasn't wanted. And when he was put into the starting lineup, you could you could sense the collective groans of the West Ham fan. And at Hammers Chat, we see it as much as anybody because we have a live chat and, and forums and everybody to, to interact with one another. So people weren't very pleased. I was I was delighted for him. I was worried about the defence when I saw the lineup and quite pleased about the attack. As it turned out, I had it the wrong way around. But Dawson played really, really well. I loved the way, if you heard me in the review, or the way he communicated. This is this is really interesting, having the sound switched off. Just how noisy Nolan is on that on the sidelines. How noisy. I never knew I never knew old Bonner spoke. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he was mute or anything like that, but I was never aware that old Bonner was, was somebody that, that gobbed off a lot on the football pitch. He does. He really does. So it's been interesting to see who are leaders on the pitch, who talks a lot. Um, and it, I think it plays a big part in football personality. And to see Dawson come in and just start telling people where to stand, to start shouting at everybody, to start communicating. What well, I do wonder, the whole Balbuena thing, I think Moyes has, has warmed to Balbuena, as you know. But it is going to be interesting. If he thinks as players they're much of a muchness, Actually, the ability to communicate and organise is is maybe going to be something that tips the balance. I don't think that'll be the last time we see Craig Dawson, certainly. And I think Fredericks, who I felt played well, played really well. I thought he was helped massively by Dawson because Dawson was was instructing him the whole time. It was really, really interesting to watch Dawson talking him through the game. And it was particularly important for that to happen because Fredericks had no help on that right side. Well, at least not until... Um, Boeing came on. I say no help. There were times when when Yarmolenko came back and, and did try and help out, but he's, he's more of a hindrance. He certainly, Fredericks wasn't blessed in the way that Aaron Cresswell was blessed, which is Pablo Fornell's putting in this ridiculous performance of um, of being... A, so I know he's not an effective winger. He's not running. He's not skipping past anyone. He's not Ronaldo, is he? Let's be perfectly honest with you. Um, but he was playing on that left side and he was he was sort of active in and around Southampton's box and then back winning the ball in our box. He played at left back a lot of the time and then sort of go, go gadget, extend the leg, cutting out a ball over the top and then controlling it. And I thought it was a tremendous performance. My point being, Aaron Cresswell had a lot more help uh, than Ryan Fredericks. And that's why I thought it was really important, the role that Dawson um, played in that. I was I was quite disappointed to see how we played in the first half in terms of an attacking intent. It's we 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 survive wave after wave of attack. And often when those attacks come in, Ogbonna heads it bang. And he just doesn't do a little trickle header. He does a 20, 20 yard header or something like that. And there's never anyone there. It would relieve the pressure so much if there was just someone there to pick that up and then run and just take the take the ball down the end of the pitch. And I, and I have to wonder if David Moyes, and they must know this. I was going to say I have to wonder if David Moyes knows this. They have to know this. They have to know that for the style of football that they play, which is counter-attacking football, they don't have the correct players. We were soaking up pressure, soaking up pressure. And then trying to relieve that pressure by hitting either Yarmolenko, Sebastian Hilaire or, or the Fornicator on a counter-attack. Well, you can't. They just don't have the pace. Honestly, they had the Southampton defenders who had the deck chairs out, that cigar and, um, you know, the feet up and the pina colada and everything like that. It is no bother for them. We have to get somebody into that attack to be able to counter-attack effectively. And this brings me on to... Um, Something I didn't overly discuss in the review because I'm I'm sick of talking about it. But you know what? Maybe I'm maybe I'm less sick than I thought because I'm going to talk about it now. Which is Sebastian Heller. Now I, I am aware that people say that there are lots of people who are unhappy with Heller. There's lots of people who agree with what I say. But he also has people that, that defend him in terms of we don't play to his strengths. I agree. By the way, you don't need to keep those people. You don't need to keep telling me we don't play to his strengths. I know. I know we don't play to his strengths. But that doesn't change the fact, knowing it doesn't change the fact that we don't play to his strengths. Moyes ain't going to change it. Should he? Should he change the tactics to suit the players at his disposal? Yes, but he's not going to. So once we've established and drawn a line under the fact that David Moyes isn't going to change 
his tactics, the only natural conclusion that we can come to is that Sebastian Heller doesn't suit the system. Forget body language. I saw him walking. Gio, in a player ratings, made a great comment. The far, he said the fastest I've seen him run all game was when the substitutes board came up. It's just not working. It's just not functioning for him. And I am no great... Like, again, every time... I, I sort of feel the need to defend myself constantly. I, I don't know I don't know why. Because I know, you know, 90%, you, you know, 95%, you get what I'm saying. I don't think Josh King is Kylian Mbappe. Okay? So you don't need to keep telling me that Josh King is not the best player around. I know, OK? I also know he's not getting in the Bournemouth team. But he's not getting in the Bournemouth team because he's a naughty boy. He's run his contract down. So, same way Ryan Fraser against the Bournemouth team when he ran his contract down. They're, they're always players run their contract down. They don't get put into the team because they're not committed to the club. Rightly so. So my point is not that Josh King is the saviour of all things West Ham. It, that, if West Ham had £30 million or £20 million to spend on a striker, should we get him? I don't think well, Josh King is as good as Ollie Watkins, the player I, I did particularly want. However, the question remains, is Josh King a better option for the system that David Moyes wants to play and won't change than Sebastian Haller? And I believe the answer is yes. The moment... That Mikel Antonio came onto that pitch. The Southampton defence did that. Well, the whole team actually as a unit. They did they did that. Well, actually they didn't do that. They went like that, which made the game more stretched. It's just something in the mindset of the defenders saying, ah, actually we need to drop back a little bit here because if this ball gets hoofed up, Antonio's going to run in behind us. They never get in that with Sebastian Haller. They're thinking, well, he's not going to run in behind. Actually, all we have to do with him is contest the header. And force him back into midfield. That's what they do. Defenders force Haller back into midfield. And unfortunately, there aren't two guys either side of him who are going to offer pace and running behind. So I was delighted to see Mikel Antonio coming back. But it's just, it further cements in my mind why we need to bring somebody in. Why do I mention Josh King? I mentioned Josh King because he almost signed for us on transfer deadline day. And I mentioned Josh King because he'll be almost free in terms of a, you know, a, a transfer fee. We'd have to pay him wages, granted. But in terms of a transfer fee, he'd be almost free. And would he improve us this season? Yes, he would. Why? Because he'd just run around faster and more effectively than Sebastian Heller does. Does Sebastian Heller have better technique? Yes, but we're not seeing it. It's not effective on the pitch. Would Sebastian Heller be good with other strikers closer to him? Yes. But I'm sick of saying it. I'm sick of expecting somebody to be close to him. You look at that game against Southampton, for that first half, Manuel Lanzini was deeper than Thomas Suchek. In the second half, he saw it out, but Suchek back next to Rice, they both looked better as a result. And he put Lanzini closer to Haller. It, it, it looked a bit better. But even when Ben Rama came on, Ben Rama was close to Haller. Fortunately, he didn't have to play too long with him. And then, and then Antonio came on and Bowen came on. It looked a little bit sharper. I don't think any of them, by the way, I don't think Ben Rama, um, Bowen or Antonio are, are electric. None of them are faster than, than for instance, the um, what's his name? Che Adams or, uh, or Theo Walcott. But they're quicker than what we had. They're quick enough to cause an opposition defence to worry, to be concerned about it. Certainly they weren't concerned about Haller's pace or lack of. They weren't concerned about Yarmolenko, who did have an absolute stinker. What's he going to do? He's going to go on his left foot. What's he going to do when he goes on his left foot? Shoot or cross? No, 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 just shoot. They weren't even worried that he was going to cross. And we, we praised him um, highly enough when he came on against Brighton with Lanzini and helped change the game. But unfortunately, and this is something, this is why I do feel that the striker is important and the addition of pace in this window is important. Because it's just too slow. Yarmolenko and Haller and then Fournells up there is too slow. But it's no slight on Fournells, by the way, who was absolutely tremendous. He was playing at left back. He was playing. He was box to not just box to box. He was in each box. But he can't be everything. We can't expect him to cover Cresswell at left back, uh, to win tackles in midfield, to take free kicks. Um, 
and, and, and do everything else that we expect as well and be fast enough uh, to skin a full back. It ain't going to happen. And largely, he's not going to be in that position because he's back defending. He's not going to be the one that breaks against the opposition defence when we win the ball and go on a counter-attack. But we do need somebody to do the job because as far as I can see, in the first half against Southampton, we had nobody to do the job. Overall, I am I am delighted. Please don't think I'm being negative about that. I'm really pleased with what I saw. Uh, really pleased. I don't mind. I, I don't. I think that's a good point. So if Anton will go on, they'll beat other teams and beat other teams well this season. I said it. I said it when we played Leeds. Leeds will go on and they'll thump teams this season where it looks like they have. Oh, Big Sam, eh? Oh, Big Sam. He's old defensive Big Sam. It ain't looking too clever. Look, we're all right. It ain't pretty. It ain't brilliant. But I do feel... As I've said for some time now that David Moyes is a good four or five players against the team that he wants to put out. I just hope that when he's got those players in mind, those players he wants to bring in, at least some of them are fast. 